Good morning, family. It's uh, day 19 of this lockdown, which has been extended and we'll be together for a, a while longer in a meeting like this. I trust that you are doing really well and that um, the Lord's faithfulness is with you. We are continuing with our study of Philippians and today we're in Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to read for you verse 14, that very well-known verse. Um, and it, it goes like this in the New Living Translation. I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Paul uses the analogy of being an athlete that started a race. He's not at the starting line anymore. He's left the, the starting blocks behind. He is now running this race. And um, he's, he's straining. He's pushing towards the finish line. He wants to win the prize. He wants to uh, do well in this race and achieve the purpose of which he started this race for, which is to win the prize. Now, what is this prize? What, what are we running the race for, if we use this analogy? Well, let me bring it back to our, our idea of discipleship and being whole life disciples. That in every area of our lives, we are in a race. We are moving towards an objective, towards a goal. In our up, our in and our out. In, we want to love the Lord more. We want to love the community of the faithful more. We want to love our brothers and sisters more. And we want to love the world more. So there's these, there's these two parts of, of this race. There's the being affected by the gospel and being effective for the gospel. Being affected by the gospel, becoming more like Christ, being changed into the image of Christ. And then being effective for the gospel is seeing the, the kingdom of heaven come on earth also. And, and my race is about both of those objectives. It's about growing in my up, my in and my out so that I can be affected by the gospel and so that I can be effective for the gospel. And um, it's a continuous work that will be happening in us. We are, we are racing towards these objectives. And, and I want to say it's important that we have both in our lives. Because it's, it, it could be that we so focused on one or the other, that we may be so focused on the being affected by the gospel, becoming the, the believers, the followers of Christ that we should be in terms of our, our, our morality and in terms of our attitudes and, and believing the right things, that we invest everything in that. And, and that may cause us to want to withdraw from this world and to say, look, the world is a, is a problem. The world tempts me. The world causes me to stumble and to not be pure and be holy in my followership of Jesus. So, so I'm just going to focus on being affected by the gospel. Or you could be that you want to just be effective for the gospel. So, so you, you're not so concerned about being uh, in right standing with God and living a holy and a pure life. But you're all about, you know, I'm out there. I'm in the world and I'm, I'm, I'm amongst the people of the world. And, and, I, and I, I don't judge people. And I, I, I'm, you know, I don't look down on people in any way. But I'm, I'm in amongst them. And I just love the people of this world. And for us, this race is not an either or. It's a both end. We have to become more like Christ. We have to become holy. We have to believe the right things and, and have the right attitudes. And Paul writes about that. He says that we may all have the same attitude, this attitude of being affected by the gospel, but then also having an attitude of being effective for the gospel. It is the believer in Christ that is empowered by the Holy Spirit that can run the race and, and pursue both of these objectives as they run the race. That sees the prize at the end of the day as having seen the kingdom of God come in us and the kingdom of God come through us so that it can be around us. Uh, a guy by the name of, uh, let me just get his name in front of me here, uh, Harvey Cohn uses an illustration which I've adapted a little bit. And if you've seen this where if, they, if they're starting a new area, like an estate that's going to be built, you know, they buy a piece of ground and then the developer buys a piece of ground and he's going to build a whole new living area on there, an estate like they do nowadays. You know, these estates that has a school, that has shops, that even has churches and has everything sort of in one space. And then what they'll often do is after they've bought the piece of ground, they'll, they'll build a show house. They'll build a house on it. That'll, that'll show you what um, the houses are going to look like in this area or what it may look like to live in this area. And then you can come and, and a lot of them, they sell or off the map, you know, they are off, the, uh, not off the map, sorry, off the, off the plan houses that you can buy a house and it's sort of pre-planned and it's got its approval and everything. And then, then they start populating that area. 
Now, in a sense, what has happened to us is we like a show house. That the Lord Jesus has bought the earth with his blood. But now he's asking of each of us to come. And allow him to move into our houses and to move into us, to live in us and through us. So that as we begin to show people, we are like a show house that shows people what it will look like to live in the kingdom of God. We're not perfect. We're on the race. But every day the grace of God is working in us and is changing us more and more into the image of Christ. And through that, not only are we becoming affected by the gospel but as the gospel affects us we become effective for the gospel and people begin to look at our lives and say wow that is that what it looks like to live in the kingdom of heaven now that requires an intentionality about our lives that requires that we pursue god no believer no no disciple is going to grow and become affected by the gospel or effective for the gospel by not pursuing it, by not being intentional. It's not works, but it is saying, Lord, I want to miss, I don't want to miss out on anything. And that's the beauty of this analogy that Paul uses where he says, I'm running the race. I forget what is behind and I strain towards what is ahead. I'm intentional. I'm not wasting time. I'm 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 following what God has in, in for me. And I want to encourage you. Pursue what the Lord has for you. Not in anxiety, not in fear, but in a surrender. Because the Lord is so good. I always say, and many of you have heard me say this, I trust God's ability to lead me more than I trust my ability to follow Him. He's going to get me there, but I know that, it, that He can't get me there if I don't pursue Him. If I don't open my life, if I don't say, Lord, here I am. If I don't come and sit before Him, if I don't surrender my heart to the gospel every day, Say, Lord, work in me. And then also to say, Lord, work through me. I want to be used by you. I want you to teach me. I, I may fail. I may, I may get it wrong. But teach me, Lord. Work with me by your spirit so that I can be effective for the gospel also. I pray for you that in this time you will be affected by the gospel and you will become effective for the gospel in increasing ways. Let's pray together. Father, we pray for, I pray for every person joining me on these uh, devotionals. I pray for every believer. I trust, Lord, that they would be experiencing, like I am, just a working of your spirit in our lives. That we would be seeing how you are drawing us nearer to Christ and nearer to becoming like Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that, that we are growing in our love for you. Thank you that we are growing in our love for the fellowship of the saints that helps us to become more like Christ. And thank you, Lord, that you are drawing us and helping us to becoming more effective for the gospel so that your kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. I pray for all of us, Lord, draw us near to you and draw the people of this world through us nearer to you also, we pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. We pray as we are entering the soon the time of the extended lockdown that we will see your faithfulness and your goodness in beautiful ways. And I thank you. I pray for every family, every person that right in their home, right in their space, they will experience your provision. They will experience your protection and that they will have your presence with them in Jesus name. Amen. Bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.